precious. Hey, Mama. Okay, it's tiny. Mm. <laughs> You've always said Mom and I were a gift from God, but you never told me what really happened. Why? I was afraid that they might take you away from me. Does Mama have a mother? Everybody's got a mother. Where is she then? Well, that's another question entirely. Well, what's the answer? I'm not psychic. It isn't anything fancy like ESP. I'm just lucky. Bernie had always told me that I should only use my luck. Thank you. For a good reason. Don't abuse your gift. What about wanting to know if you have a family out there somewhere? Is that a good enough reason? I need somebody to buy me a ticket. Jeez Louise, did you do wrong a casino? I don't think our Heidi can be Heidi if she doesn't do this. I woke up on the ground to the sinking sound of hitting the bar. I felt like I was going somewhere. But the lowest of lows, if you know where to go, but come home. We were waiting for you, Heidi, and we didn't even know it. Now I see what I was hoping. Slowly I'm unfolding. It's all in my head. A person has a right to know they're not supposed to guess who they are. Call in the air. Heads or tails? Heads. Again. Tails. Heads. Heads. That's ten for ten. You know, just watching that trailer, I already started to tear up again. It's, it's, this film is really moving, and Talitha, you do such excellent work in it. Thank you. Um, you know, but I want to start with you, Sarah, and hear about the journey from book to screen. Where did this story about this young girl with a mother um, with a severe case of autism originate? Um, a lot of my ideas for my books, and I've written about 60 books, um, come from houses, old houses that I like to look at and try and imagine who lives inside. And there was this sort of dilapidated house in the Catskill Mountains that I kept thinking and had a story to tell. And one day I stopped to take pictures and the story began to form in my head about a girl who's looking for the, the, the meaning of a word that her mother says, because mama only says 22 words for a while and then suddenly she has this new word, sooth, and no one knows what it means. And so she goes in search of that word. Yeah, you'll notice we're all wearing bracelets. We are. Word sure sooth, sooth. <laughs> um, on them. And yeah, talk to me about this sort of mystery element of the film because you really don't know what the word means until the end, and it inspires this journey of self discovery, you know, across country. That, and that seems to be a popular element now, like the mystery to sort of drive this story. Well, the word sooth actually came from the number 104 bus. I was writing the, writing the book here in New York City on the Upper West Side, and I was trying to find this mysterious word, and I was walking down Broadway, and the number 104 stopped, and the doors opened, and then they closed. Sooth. And that's where the word came from. <laughs> Talitha, did you uh, read the book before joining the project? I, I did. I read it right when I got a call back. I read the script and the book, like, in a week. I couldn't put it down. It was just so good. And it made me really cry at the end when I heard what happened. Yeah, what moved you in particular? I mean, there's so many points in this book and story from Alfre Woodard's performance to, um, you know, your relationship with your mother. Was there a particular thing that made you really excited about working on it? Well, the whole idea, actually, of her not knowing where she came from because her mom has autism, and Alfre's character has agoraphobia, so she can't go outside, only maybe a couple blocks outside, really. So she didn't really know what the real world was like. She only has this little world inside her apartment with her mother and her neighbor. And then that's why she goes on a journey to find out who her bloodline is. What she finds out that she really had a family all along. You know, and Sarah, you've written so many books, um, but this one has really seemed to have a permanence and has been so, so popular. Why do you think this story in particular has resonated with audiences, you know, more than a decade after you first wrote it? You know, I have a theory that people who write for young readers have arrested development at whatever you know, level they want to write at. And I, I am totally a fifth grade girl at heart and sense of humor and all that. And a big part of that age is, um, is that you're wondering who you are. And I know for myself, I definitely wondered, are my parents really my parents? And then once, when I had children, one of my sons says to me, are you sure that I'm really yours? And I thought, wow, it really is this sort of, you know, 
classic journey that kids go on. So I think most people can relate to that feeling of kind of wondering who you are and where you came from. So I, li I like to write about that. And in this case, you know, um, I, my dad was an English professor, so there was a lot of focus on words in my family. So the idea of creating a character who had all the complex emotions inside but didn't have the words to express them was very interesting to me. Yeah, and that comes across so beautifully because even though her vocabulary is limited, there's such a joy to this family, especially with Jessica Collins' performance. And so often we see stories um, with people with disabilities, and they're, they're so tragic, and it's sort of defined by tragedy. And that's really not the case here. So maybe could you both speak to that, how this is sort of a different take on the story? I feel like Jessica Collins also gave Mama's character a childlike essence to where Heidi actually was caring for her and teaching her how to do all these things that she didn't know how to do because she wasn't raised correctly. I don't think her parents knew how to deal with her. And I feel like she brought all of this new idea to this character that wasn't even in the book or the script in a way. Jessica just took this character and made her her own. And I know um, when I was I was allowed to come on the set, I they were very, very inclusive. A lot of times the author is just left out of the process, but the screenwriter wanted to work with me, and so did Stephen Gyllenhaal, and I, I did get to come and watch. And I remember the first time I met Jessica Collins, who plays Mama, she said, give me a hint. You know, Tell me what you think Mama is thinking. And I said, the main thing is that she's happy. She's very happy here. She feels loved by Bernadette and by... Heidi, who, you know, she's basically raised since the time that, you know, Bernadette has raised her from the time that she was a tiny, tiny baby. And that was a really important part of the story for me, is that Mama is not struggling with her challenges. She's living happily with them. And I think that's one reason why we have um, been granted the support of the autism community, which is, has been a wonderful, wonderful surprise and, and, and pleasure for us that the book has been embraced in that way. And the movie. I mean, that's so important that you get this sort of validation from the community you're representing on screen and um, in this book. What sort of responses have you gotten? Um, are you anticipating sort of a lot of things on social media, a lot of people coming up to you? I mean, it is such a moving story about this community. I haven't actually got any yet. <laughs> I am looking forward to it, but mostly I've been getting responses from Annabelle Creation, the other film that I did. But I'm really excited to see how people react to this one because this is one of my first projects, and I feel like it was the one that helped me grow the most as an actress. Yeah, Annabelle Creation's a little different. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I have to say, I couldn't see it because I love Talitha so much, and she will always be Heidi in my head. And when I saw the trailer of her getting sucked up into the air, I was like, no, I'm not going to. I don't no, want to see Heidi, that. No, Heidi, yeah, no. No, Heidi. <laughs> um, and were you involved in the casting process at all? Like, what, what do you think that Talitha captures about Heidi that, I mean, this performance is so great, but I'm curious, you two <laughs> seem to have such a nice friendship and bond. We, we do, and I, and I have to say, we were just talking about this in the green room beforehand. Um, we heard various numbers, 2,000, 3,000, 5,000 girls who auditioned for the part. And we were sent 12 audition tapes, the screenwriter and I, to look at, and we both picked Talitha separate from each other because they chose a scene where she's telling a lie and Talitha played it so subtly. And some of the other girls, you know, leaned on it a little more heavily and, you know, Talitha just seemed to kind of embody the character and understand the nuance of that scene, which is kind of a complicated scene. And so we just fell in love with her. And then when I met her, she's just as nice as, uh, as she seems like she's going to be. So it's a sort of, yeah, she's, she's something. We love her. Yeah, I mean, the movie really rests on your shoulders, and you're going toe-to-toe -to -toe with some... And look at the size of those shoulders. <laughs> and they're not so big, yeah. I know. Um, you know, there's some big name, uh, huge talents in this film. Alfred Woodard, Cloris Leachman. Um, what was it like acting with these sort of screen legends? Did you, do you get nervous, or do you feel really at home on a set now? I mean, they're all brilliant people. They're extremely well-spoken, and they know what they're talking about, and they have so much wisdom to give you. But I actually didn't know who they were <laughs> before I worked with them. I had no clue who Floris Leachman was or Alfred Woodard. And then I researched after I was done filming, and I was like, oh, my gosh. <laughs> I, because totally I regretted better. saying so much on that set afterwards. But they're just they're amazing people, and they're extremely humble. So I, I just didn't know at all. And that didn't I feel like that helped me because I actually wasn't nervous on set. I was just able to fully get into that mindset of being Heidi. Watch, watching her work was incredible. I think probably my favorite scene was when um, Gary, the screenwriter, and I had gotten a message from Stephen Gyllenhaal. Um, we're sorry, but we don't have enough money to serve to to um, 
to shoot this scene that was very important in the book where Heidi chops off all of her hair. And he said, the wigs are going to be too expensive because we have a very low budget movie. So they said, he said, come up with something else. They were like, oh my gosh, what are we going to do? We had to do it like in 10 minutes. And so it involves lipstick, which Talitha had to put on her face. And right before she did the first take, they said, and don't get it on your dress because we don't have a replacement for the dress. And she's like, okay. And then she did it in one take. It's a phenomenal scene. And she didn't get her dress dirty either. So we were just like, oh my gosh, this girl is amazing. Bow down, yeah. <laughs> yeah <really. laughs> so that is a, a really standout moment and um, the emotions that you're able to convey. I mean, I'm so surprised. Someone of your age that's able to do that, it always is so impressive to me. So, I mean, congrats on that. You know, I'm curious, since the book was written in 2004, and there are you know, um, just conversations about representing disabilities on screen have evolved, and sort of awareness of those communities have evolved as well. Were there any sort of changes that you made from the book to the movie, or have you sort have, have your, has your perspective about those issues developed? You know, one of the things that I love about the movie is that it hasn't changed very much from the book. And that is something, I have so many author friends who just kind of, grin and bear it while their movies are being made because they're not included and they change everything. And both Stephen Gyllenhaal and Gary Williams were so respectful of the story. So I have to say, no, I don't think there were a lot of really big changes that were made. The only you know major difference in that way in the movie is that I never said exactly what it was that Mama had. You know, I had, there were words that they said like, oh, you know, she has a bum brain or, you know, she looks fine from the outside, but, you know, inside, you know, some of the pieces are broken and bent. And one, one of the first conversations I had with Stephen Gyllenhaal, he said, well, what's wrong with Mama? And I said, it doesn't have a name. He said, oh, that's not going to fly in Hollywood. You got to give it, give, give it a name. And so we, we decided that, you know, she could be on the spectrum. And so she had autism. And how did sort of Jessica Collins go about approaching this role? Because it's a huge task to authentically portray someone um, with autism and autism and you know it could go wrong right it can <laughs> it go could. really really wrong right um, was there a lot of research involved I mean even on your part did you sort of explore um, yeah the, the impact the experience of living with that well actually just right off from the table read which was like our first week I had booked it like a month prior I was the first one who had booked it and she had just booked it like a week before and then right from the table read she just tapped into it and I was just like whoa just because it felt <laughs> so real I watched a couple videos online I've met some people who have autism and she just was able to convey that so realistically that I was just extremely impressed and on set it felt natural and I was like so impressed with her because Alfrey was fully in character she was in character which made me want to just constantly be in character we never flipped in and out we weren't like that we weren't like joking in between scenes we were always our characters on set and I think that really helped to give it like a nice, realistic feel to the story. Uh, Jessica was trained at Juilliard. She's a method actor. And so watching her just sort of create the physical presence for Mama and how she, what her voice was like, is it, it was so much fun to watch it. And, and those are some of my favorite scenes in the movie. Um, she's just luminous. She is. You know, I'm curious, were there any conversations about casting an actress that did have autism in real life? Or was that part of sort of the... I think around I casting? no, it wasn't, and I think it would have been the level of her challenge would have been very, very difficult. I think to cast someone who had that same level, um, and you know, I think she did a very respectful and and a, a great representation. I think she did. No, I agree. Um, you know, and so this movie is rated PG thirteen, mm. um, and th <laughs> we've been talking about that a little bit. And you wrote yeah. this really powerful article for HuffPost about sort of your frustration with the rating and how sometimes it can reveal, like a, as you said, like a, a hidden, hidden bias, bias yeah. against people with disabilities yeah. and their emotions. So could you talk to me a little bit about that and your sure. sort of frustrations? The, um, the book is um, rated as for ages 10 and up, which means fourth and fifth graders are reading it. I spend a great deal of my time and energy visiting schools around the country every year, and many of the the people who read the book are kids in the fourth and fifth grade. So they're, you know, ten, some are nine, nine and 10. So when the PG-13 rating came in, I, I you know, was so surprised. And, the, um, and, and our distributor said, would you be willing to appeal it? Would you be willing to speak at the appeal? And I was like, yeah, absolutely. So I prepared my speech and I was all ready. I was kind of nervous and 12 people watched the movie and then they came in, some of them were drying their eyes and they said, we loved your movie, but it's definitely PG-13. And I said, why do you say that? You haven't even heard what I have to say. And they said, we know because it's so emotional. And I said, did you read the book? No, but we know it's so emotional. So I was concerned that my readers would be discouraged 
you know, from going to the movies because they would think, oh, with a PG-13 rating, it has sex or violence or bad language or drugs. No, 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 no. It's exactly the same as the book. And then at the very end, they said, you know, this is a compliment, right? PG-13 is a compliment because we're, we think that adults will like it too. And I thought, well, that's great, but please don't rule out my readers as well. I think we're going to be okay. I think we're going to be okay. But it was a sad moment. <laughs> Well, the movie, yeah, stands on its own regardless. I'm curious, what's kind of your perspective as someone closer to that age group and so intimately involved with the film? Do you feel like there's parts that are inappropriate or maybe not, you know, good for younger audiences? I actually don't understand that rating either. There's not a single cuss word in it, I believe. There's only one tragic part of the film, and I don't think it should be rated PG-13 because it has a tragedy. I feel like 10-year-olds could see this film. I feel like 9-year-olds, I feel like 8-year-olds, just even... Three-year-olds to 30 could see it on up. Yeah, no, it really does appeal to such a universal base. And it reminds me of like a film like Miracles um, from Heaven, which is also a very emotional story with you know a child facing some medical issues. Mm -hmm. And um, that was a PG movie. Um, and in no way is this film like drastically different tonally no. or thematically. No. Um, uh, yeah, it's 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 a little bit of a mystery. Why that happened, and that's why, you know, one of the things we were talking about is, like, is there a hidden bias against people with disabilities showing emotion? Because those were the scenes that they cited. Mama gets upset in public, and she bangs on the window of a bus. And, and Alfre Wooder does an incredible scene where Bernadette tries to go outside, and her agoraphobia gets the better of her. They cited that scene. Those were the things they objected to. And I think we don't have to protect our children from seeing emotion and seeing people with disabilities struggling with how to, you know, express their emotions. So it was a mystery. Right, and it's even sort of more important to show young people these issues and portray them authentically. Um, you know, before we go to audience q and I'd love to hear, you know, sort of in that vein, what do you hope uh, audiences really take away from this film when they walk out of the theater? We can start with you, Talitha. Well, one of my favorite parts of the film is the idea that anyone can be your family. You don't have to be related to them by blood. Like when you marry someone, you're not obviously related to them by blood. <laughs> you <laughs> fall in love with them, and they care for you, and they do anything for you. And I feel like that's one part that I really liked is that Bernadette, the neighbor, actually raised Heidi. And she really is Heidi's mother in a way because she she raised her. She taught her everything she knows. She helped her read and write, and she homeschooled her, and she really is her mom. And I just I love the idea that almost anyone can be your family. You don't have to be connected to them with DNA or blood. I think for me, you know, uh, I wanted very much for this movie to be considered a family movie. And uh, many, many of the reviews and comments about it have used that term family movie. To me, this is a movie that is a family movie in the truest sense of the word, which is not that you go with your children and kind of grin and bear it and wait for it to be over, but that you go and you enjoy it, and so do your kids, and then you have something to talk about afterwards. So, uh, you know, it won the book won the Parents' Gold Choice Award. The movie has been given the Dove Foundation Award for Wholesome Film. So I'm thrilled with that response, and I hope families will go to see the movie. Yes. Um, so I believe we have some questions. Oh, hello. Hi. So... I'm actually in the in the middle of writing um, a college paper about film ratings and the history of it, where I where I'm sort of confused onto why something like this would be PG-13 opposed to something like Big that came out way back in the days and was given a PG rating. So I was thinking, um, so I was wondering if uh, if you would consider having um, schools. Uh, teachers go out to take a school trip to go see the film um, in, in light to in, encourage um, different audiences about uh, the different issues? It's, you know, it's a fantastic question. Thank you so much for asking that. One of the things I was very concerned about when we were given the PG-13 rating is that it would limit kids being able to come, particularly on field trips, because I did some research and found out there are certain school districts in this country where you cannot take a child on a school field trip to see a PG-13 movie, even if they're reading the book in the school. So that was really disheartening. But I just visited a middle school in Tenekil, and, uh, called Tenekil Middle in Coaster, New Jersey. They fell in love with the movie, with the trailer. They had some pushback from the superintendent, and they persevered, and they're all coming to the movie when it opens in West Nyack. So I'm thrilled. So I think you know, we just kind of try and have to fight a little bit for it. Thanks for your question. Um, I'm wondering, from a creative standpoint, is it easier to play a character based on a book or one that's just written in a script? They're actually both very different. I don't have a favorite. 
but I do I did like playing Hailey because they already wrote her out for me. I didn't have to fill in the blanks in a way. Most of the time when I play other roles, I have to give them a backstory and I have to give them meaning and what where they came from and why they're there and just reasoning behind everything. But Heidi was already there. She was already on the pages. I just had to bring her to life. And I really love that about her. One more question. Hi. So you mentioned when you were writing Mama, you really didn't put a name to what she had. Mm -hmm. I was wondering if you went out and you researched many different mental health um, issues and like diagnosis to create her character. Okay, I'm going to give you the honest answer. Okay. I don't like to research. I like to make stuff up. And that was one of the reasons why I didn't give it a name because I thought, well, you know, I have friends who have kids who have been diagnosed as autistic. You know, I have um, friends who have kids who don't have a diagnosis, but there's clearly sort of something amiss. And I thought if I don't give it a name, then I don't have to do the research and stick to that. You know, so uh, I didn't do a lot of research about it. I did take some things like Mama says, dun, dun, dun. And we have a family friend that had um, an autistic child, and he said, dun, dun, dun. And so that became something that we said in our family, and then I carried it on into the book and then into the movie. So that's kind of the kind of research that I do. I'm a people watcher, like a really intense people watcher, and so I consider that my research. Well, I have to let you two go, but thank you oh. so much for joining <laughs> us. Um, and everyone, take your family, take your friends to go see, uh, go see So Be It. It's uh, in theaters now. Thank you so much. Thank you Thank so you. much. It's a pleasure. Thanks. <laughs>